All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. We are pleased to bring you another episode of The Robe That Binds Us. My dear brothers and sisters, we're still talking about the, uh, oblig- the obligation of following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and going over uh, some uh, uh, other positions toward the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ from some uh, deviant uh, ideas and uh, sects uh, appeared in the history of Islam. But unfortunately, their ideas and their views are still uh, quite common uh, in, in, in these modern days uh, as well. Uh, basically, those who oppose the obligation of following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and as I said before, uh, that we can categorize those people to different groups. Uh, some of them, or some of those people who don't believe on the uh, authority of Sunnah in general, uh, and some who don't believe, who don't accept a had hadith. Uh, I have to explain what this means a little bit. The Sunnah been narrated to us in two. Uh, ways. One, they call it mutawatir. Mutawatir, it means a large number of narrator narrated this text. A large number of narrated narrated one text. And these, in this large number of narrator, they are not related to each other. There is no way that they uh, pre-plan this or uh, they all agree on one lie. For example, 10 people from Kufa, 10 people from Egypt, 5 people from Medina, 6 people from Yemen. They are all, all of them narrated the same thing. That's impossible, in, especially in the old days where there is no uh, this uh, uh, new technology in communication to agree on, on the same lie, on the same lie. That's what you call a mutawatir. So, large number of narrator, they narrate the same thing, they narrate the same thing, and there is no way that they will all agree on lie. This is what you call mutawatir hadith, mutawatir hadith. But another hadith were narrated with less number than this large number by three, four, uh, five, one, two, three, uh, this numbers or less numbers than uh, the large number. Uh, the, the other group of hadith called ahad. Ahad a hadith, which is was not narrated by a large number of narrator. That's what ahad and mutawatir means. So this group said, we will not accept any ahad, any hadith ahad. We only accept the mutawatir. Then, so uh, this opinion, they say that the only uh, they only accept what is mutawatir, such as the way of the prayer. And the way of making hajj, they said this hadith is mutawatir because people uh, accept it and it's very well known. So this is the only thing we take from the sunnah. Any other information, we will not take it, we don't accept it, we don't trust it. <clears throat> How to, uh, what is our position from this uh, opinion or idea? No doubt this concept of uh, accepting what comes from large number and not to accept what comes from uh, individ- or, uh, just certain individual two or three or one. Uh, there is no way to say what is the only number you will accept. That's why those who divide the hadith to mutawatir and ahad, they couldn't come up with a, a specific number they agree upon. You know, there is nothing, there is no, no way anybody can claim that there is any consensus among the scholars 
to define what is mutawatir. What is the number? Is it 10? What about 11? What about 13? Is it 6? Is 5 enough? Or 3 is enough? Or maybe 7, 17, 70, 100? What is the number exactly? There is no way to define that. So that's why this is not the right measurement. This is not the right way or tool to know if I can accept this narration or not. Ahl al-Hadith, the scholar of Hadith, they make more sense. What they said, they said, there is no doubt, as much as there is more number of narrator, as much as this Hadith became stronger, but when the law, when the number of the narrator decreased, it doesn't mean that this Hadith became weak. Because the only way to judge the Hadith is weak or authentic is not by the number of the narrator. It is by the status of the narrator. He has a good memory. He's a trustworthy. He is a liar. Or he is a person who never lies in his life. He's a person who narrates things similar to what other people narrate or not. They have their own methodology. And this is not a class of teaching a Hadith. But to go into the details. But they set their own methodology of uh, uh, criticizing the narrator and examining the narrator and to see who will be accepted and who will not. Opening the book, which is called the book of Rijal, the book which is talking about the biography of the narrator, you will see in details how they handle very, very well this issue. And this sign, by the way, is not exist in any other religion today. It does not exist in any other community other than the Muslim community and other than uh, the uh, Islam. Because Al-Isnad, the chain of narrator, this is something unique about our religion. Something unique about our religion and that's what kept this religion saved until today. So if they claim that, we'll say first, how can you define the large number and based on what exactly you, you, you say that. And by the way, the Hajj, been narrated not by a large number. The hadith of Hajj itself is not been narrated by that 100 or 20 or 30, might 5, 6, 7 of the Sahaba. And not every single thing in Hajj that every Muslim practice today necessarily narrated by a large number of people, a large number of, the, of Sahaba. Also we say that if this is the case, that means most of the religion will not be accepted because the ahadith which is considered mutawatir are very few, are very few. Also the mutawatir itself, which is the hadith been narrated by a large number of people, is two types. Sometimes not, this, not the narrators, there is no large number of narrator sharing the same text, but sometimes they share the same meaning. Yani, one hadith about uh, encouraging Muslims to or the hadith which is talking about the punishment of the grave. The people in their grave, they will be punished for some of their deeds, or they will be rewarded for their uh, deeds in the grave. The a number of hadith talking about the subjects are mutawatir, are so many. That's what they call it, tawatir ma'nawi, intangible uh, tawatir, if we can say uh, that. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, the refutation for this uh, idea. We have the third group who said we don't accept a had hadith in matters of aqidah only. Hmm. In matters of aqidah only. So the previous one, in all matters, aqidah, fiqh, and rules and beliefs, but here said in aqidah, which is only in the issue of aqidah, faith. In the issue of the faith. Why? Why they came up with this? Why, why, sir, why people would say that? They said because belief should be based on certainty. And ahad will not establish certainty. They said it's a doubtful. So you cannot establish certainty with something not certain. So they said, they said ahad hadith cannot establish certainty because you're not certain about it. You're not certain about it. That's why you cannot base your belief on it. This is their argument. First of all, I would like to explain one point very uh, uh, clearly here. Because I heard, I heard so many people um, sometimes misleading others by this false information. 
They say that the majority of the scholars said that a had hadith will not establish ilm, knowledge, certainty. That's why it will not be used in aqidah. This statement like this, putting these two information together like this, I don't think it is uh, uh, accurate or it is correct at all. Yes, there are so many scholars said, there are so many scholars, especially in the late time, in the late time, after the uh, in fifth, gener- fifth century and sixth and seventh and eighth century, yes, so many scholars in that period of time have said that uh, a had hadith it will not establish knowledge or certainty. But not necessarily every single person said that, said that we don't accept it in aqidah. That's not true. That's not true at all. That's why you might see some scholars said a had will not establish a certainty, but they will use a hadith, a had, to uh, establish some issue in aqidah, like talking about the paradise, describing the paradise or the hellfire, and what will happen in them. May Allah make us among the people of paradise and save us from the hell, fire all. So, uh, putting these uh, together is not uh, a quite um, uh, accurate or it's not proper. Uh, as for saying I had established certainty or not, let me put it this way. I had hadith, it means a hadith was not narrated by a large number of people. It could be one, two, three. So nobody ever said, Ahl sunnah or other than Ahl sunnah said, Ahad, Ahad hadith has to be accepted in aqidah. Nobody said that. Ahl sunnah is saying, authentic hadith, acceptable hadith. Because among the Ahad, weak, fabricated, and authentic. So you cannot say, generally speaking, Ahad cannot be accepted. No, we say whatever is authentic will be accepted. And whatever is weak will not be accepted. See the difference? Two, from where, from where they came up with this differentiation between aqidah and fiqh? You know, as salat, is it part of our belief or its rules? No doubt, if you don't believe in salat, you became not Muslim. If you believe that salat is not obligatory, you're not Muslim. So every single action in Islam, there is a belief related to it. There is a belief related to it. You cannot separate these two from each other. That's why the separation from uh, uh, iman and action is not from the way of Ahl Sunnah. That's why actions are part of our iman. Faith is based on three pillars. One of them is the actions. So you cannot separate these from two, these two from each other. Also, we say that the Prophet ﷺ sent his messengers. Didn't he send Mu'adh to Yemen? Didn't he send Mus'ab to Medina? to teach them? Didn't he send his messengers to the other countries to teach them what? Aqidah or to teach them salat and siyam and hajj and zakat? Teach them both. Did the Prophet ﷺ ever send large number of people to deliver the aqidah's message or the faith or the things related to the uh, belief? No. So this concept that we need large number of narrator to do this is not, has no basis in Qur'an or Sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa That's why Shafi'i rahimahullah said that this is itself an innovation and he rejected uh, that concept and uh, uh, also the scholars of Ahl sunnah Unfortunately, we are out of time uh, for today. Please join us in the next episode. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh.